Georgia and Alabama will face off in one of the biggest games of the year, and we'll get to see Ole Miss play a non-high school team for once. And breaking news, Auburn just turned the ball over again. Time to get the squad together. You're talking ball with the SEC squad. From Alabama to Tennessee, from Georgia to Oklahoma, from Auburn to Texas, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming SEC weekend. It's the SEC squad, and we have a seat for you. Hurt feelings and thin skin are prohibited. Squad up. You're part of the SEC squad. Oh, yeah, absolutely prohibited. Welcome into the SEC squad. Sit back, (laughs) grab your favorite beverage, and join us as we get you ready for another wild week across the SEC. And, of course, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet. You'll get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, we got a great panel today, guys. Welcoming them in, we've got Brandon Olson, Locked on Gators. Zach Blackerby, host of Locked on Auburn. Stephen Willis, Locked on Ole Miss. Jonathan Davis, Locked on Longhorns. Chris Marler. Locked on Gamecocks and Jimmy Stein locked on Bama. Gents, welcome in. Uh, let's get it kicked off how we do every week. I'm just going to ask you to make a prediction about your team this week. It doesn't have to be a score prediction, but just a prediction on something that might happen in your game this week. And if you got a bye week, just give me a, a prediction anyway. Brandon Olson, the Gators, you guys got to win. All right. Yay. Um, we are going to go 0 and 1 in this bye week because. Billy Napier, William Napier, uh, Blue Chip Billy, G5 Billy, Sunbelt Billy, LinkedIn Billy, as we know and love him here at Locked On. Uh, my favorite, too. Uh, he better be updating that profile because he's still the head coach for now. Uh, feels like de- delaying the inevitable. I-, I have no idea what the plan is there other than I guess we're just going to keep sucking until we keep sucking and then keep sucking. Um, that's the plan there. Yeah, Florida. All exactly. right. Calm down, Jonathan. Calm down, Jonathan. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's how it's looking for the Florida Gators, right? There is a must win up ahead <laughs> against UCF next week. If they lose that one. Um, they are. Yeah. They're losing that game. Bet, bet it right now. Bet it right now. <laughs> They're losing that game. Zach Blackerby, Auburn's been talked about a lot this week on our show and <laughs> all the other shows. Give me a thought yeah. on the old Tigers. Yeah, here's a prediction. Auburn turns it over less than five times this Ooh. weekend against mm. Oklahoma, well, which – is uh yeah it, it, that might be somewhat bold that might be somewhat bold given how um how it's gone against Arkansas and Cal but yeah I'll uh, I'll say Hopper turns it over less than five times against the Sooners on Saturday yeah Billy Bowman has entered the chat he said challenge accepted he'll get five picks himself this week uh yeah. Stephen Willis Ole Miss they're gonna play a team that's uh actually somewhat decent I guess. Yeah, probably cover, um, honestly. I think Princely and Mommy Ellen is about to eat, honestly. If you look at what Dylan Stewart did for South Carolina against Kentucky's offensive line, that dude's getting ready to eat some Taron Perkins. I think the Ole Miss defensive line is the difference in this ballgame. Mm. It's going to be fun to see Ole Miss playing a, an yeah. SEC team finally. Jonathan Davis, a thought on uh, Archmania and uh, the Texas Longhorns? Well, yeah, I was about to say, as of, you know, Tuesday night when we're recording this, we still don't know who's going to be starting. Quinn Ewers or Arch Manning, more than likely going to be Arch Manning. I'm going to say in this game against Mississippi State, even though it's a step up somewhat, right, in talent-wise compared to ULM, Arch Manning is going to complete a little bit more than 52% of his passes and probably won't throw two interceptions. A crazy spread we see. Texas favored by 38 and a half against Mississippi State in their SEC opener. My bold prediction, Texas finds a way to cover that 38 and a half point spread against Mississippi State. They win big at home in their first SEC game. Brandon has his hand up. I'm calling on on Brandon <laughs> right here. If I have permission, I have permission to take over really quick. I actually, actually that is, is ULM a step up? Because I just watched Billy Napier put up the most points he's put up against an FBS opponent since he got hired three years ago. Hey, man, you know, not one positive thing to say about when your team does remotely well is, is a wild, wild take. He scored 22 against Charlotte last year. I have no he scored 45 on Saturday. It, the, Look, the, I, the, dual, the two quarterback system went perfectly. They had two incompletions the entire game. I've been, I'm new here. Lifetime contract. I'm lifetime here. contract. Yeah, just, like, <laughs> I, I'm new here. I've been told it means more, right? And yeah. so I'm just sticking up for there Mississippi State yeah. just a little bit, right? I'm sticking up for Mississippi State a little bit. I'm going to say Mississippi State is just a little bit better than General Booty and ULM. Nonetheless, Texas covers 38 and a half this weekend in Arch's second start, most likely. 
I will say you, my I'll favorite thing about Arch Mania has been the, the the meme of him like running the jog, and it looks just like Peyton and Eli. That that the Manning, Manning jog. jog, it is Hashtag insane. The Manning jog for it's sure. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Mm-hmm. I just want to see Texas play somebody again. It feels like they're going to be like two weeks from now. We're going to still be talking about Texas going, man, remember they beat Michigan. It's like, yeah, how many weeks can we talk about that freaking win over Michigan? Like play somebody of relevance. Don't get OU here in a couple weeks after the bye week, but play um, somebody of relevance. They went on the road and like destroyed the defending champ. I mean, what else do you oh, want them to do? That's what I'm saying, Zach? Like that's the one game. Ago, right? What do you know about going on the road, Zach? You guys haven't even left home yet. And you still suck. It's not my call. <laughs> That's not my call, but yeah, we I mean, have totally if, wasted this five game home stand. No if the SEC had, had nine problem. conference games, you probably would see that, Gordy, but you know, we have eight conference games, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, look, I know you miss playing Kansas State and Baylor, but um, the big boy football is coming up real soon. Marler, Gamecocks whipped up on Akron like you said they would, three and one for the first time since 2017. Oh, Robbie Ashford going for 334 and three touchdowns with no interceptions. I bet some some people probably wish they still had him on campus. Here's, here's my bold prediction. We're going to spend the off week listening to Auburn and Florida bitch about their same mistakes they constantly make. If you guys want to be in charge of another coaching hire or another quarterback change, like you've remotely done a good job of it in the past, have at it. We're, we are I'm not going to take stats from football. the only guy that's 0-2 against Billy Napier. <laughs> I'm not taking stats from that. You, you are. are. You are. You, and you want a new coach. All you've done since August is, is bitch about him. The exactly. Coach. That's and the difference between our program. That. That's you the difference between our program. Is on way Mom ahead of is the only two Just against saying. you in the, the past two years. And he's been terrible. And I'm still like, that's not even close to good enough. I need better. And he's still yeah. so much better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> then who? Then Shane. B- are, are you guys three and one? He's two and zero oh against you. Is it is that this year or is that I know he's like, listen, two and zero against you. Numbers two are hard. But like, is that this year? 2-0 and against I'll you. give you a number. $26 million. That's going to be the buyout in a couple weeks, and you guys are going to screw up your next coaching hire, and you're going to be the next Tennessee. It's what you already are for like the next decade. This feels like a valedictorian of summer school <laughs> argument. I just hope that YouTube commenter is tuned in this week. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I just hope he's here. Right? I hope he's not watching the ACC show. I hope he's watching that. I hope he is watching. I hope he knows I hate him. Jimmy, Jimmy Stein, we've actually got a really good game in the conference this week. Save us. Alabama, Georgia. I mean, we're all going to be watching this one. Everybody, the whole country is going to be tuned in for this one. We got presidents making the trip there. Uh, give me a thought on the tide this week. Yeah, it makes you really appreciate the BCS era. I mean, if this game was played in the BCS era where only two teams survived, I don't know how the fan bases would literally live through an Alabama-Georgia game played in September where it would feel yeah. like an elimination game. This won't be an elimination game. I think the loser of this game, whichever team it happens to be, will still literally be a Vegas favorite to make the playoff. So in that sense, some of the pressure's off, but don't tell Alabama fans, don't tell Georgia fans that uh, losing wouldn't be a big deal. Georgia is going to figure out whether they had a Nick Saban problem or an Alabama problem. And uh, Alabama fans would like to show everyone that just because there's a new sheriff in town, it's still the same old Alabama. That's what's on the line this Saturday. I've noticed, guys, we've 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 lost some some guys along the way. Like John Miller, Mizzou plays two close games, and suddenly John Miller <laughs> stopped showing up. Moscona, we haven't seen him since week one, since he predicted a, U, a LSU win over USC. He's disappeared. So he's already going to be right now on on text. So this is great. <laughs> I'm I'm getting it on twofold right now. Just kind of funny to say, like uh, Brandon, I, I appreciate you showed up because the Gators mm-hmm. won. Hey, I'm all back down, man. And hey, 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 hey. I showed up last week after a Texas a and loss. That's true. I was here. Yeah, we, we in fact forced Zach to join us this week because Auburn was so bad. <laughs> we said you, you, you have to be here this week. Yeah, soccer, uh, soccer practice got canceled. So I'm hanging uh-huh. out with you guys instead. You're playing soccer? <laughs> My daughter is for sure. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Well, will Zach get signed with uh, Manchester United? We're going to just talk about that when we return. We'll also dive deeper into Georgia and Alabama. Can Auburn get things right against the Sooners? The SEC squad talking more ball next. More with the SEC squad here in just a second, but want to let you guys know if you're an NFL fan, college fan, or whatever, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats. You can view live play by play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And that is at FanDuel. You can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed 
when you place your first $5 bet. Of course, they got all the action happening around the SEC up there this weekend. If you like Kentucky, the road underdog heading to Ole Miss, they are plus 17 and a half if you like uh, the, the Kentucky Wildcats. You can also get in on Auburn as a two and a half point home underdog to Oklahoma right now. Auburn plus two and a half over at FanDuel. And uh, how about Arkansas? Plus three and a half against Texas A&M and Dallas over at Jerry's World. All those lines up there for you right now over at FanDuel.com. And on the FanDuel app, it is America's number one sports book. Check them out at FanDuel.com. The SEC squad continues on here with our panel of SEC hosts. And guys, we got to dive into it. We know Jimmy kind of gave us the primer already for Alabama, Georgia. But look, there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of movement being you know, moving towards Alabama. I've already been reading articles about how Jalen Milrow is going to tear it up this week, that Georgia's overrated because they only beat Kentucky by one point. Who's feeling Georgia? Anybody feeling Georgia right now? There's still the FanDuel's got them as a two and a half point favorite right now. Yeah, I just honestly don't know. It's a situation. If Alabama wins, loses this game, that Tennessee game is going to be absolutely massive. If Georgia loses this game, that Texas game is going to be absolutely massive. And I, Bama being a home dog, I, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what that is. That's like me reading a foreign language at this point. It's the first time it's happened since uh, 2007 in uh, Nick Saban's first year in Tuscaloosa. First time in 17 years that, that Alabama's been a home underdog, and there's been a lot of big games of Bryant Denny. Uh, We'll see what that line looks like, I think, closer to kickoff. I can see a lot of late money coming in on Alabama myself, and I won't be surprised if it's kind of closer to a pick Uh, We'll have to see. It it opened as a pick like a week ago after the Georgia-Kentucky game, going, and then it went to two and a half and one and a half, and it was like four and a half this summer. So it's it's been all over the place. Right. But we'll see. Uh, Again, one other thing to point out, Ryan Williams wasn't born the last time Alabama was a home That's underdog. Insane. Insane. Which is just a, uh, Such a great stat. stat. It's, it's really interesting, too. I mean, this is the true test for Kalen DeBoer. Look, he passed the first test. They went on the road and beat Wisconsin, but everybody expected him to do that. This is the first introduction to the SEC for Kalen DeBoer. Look, you won it. Fresno State and Washington. You know, you beat a good good team in the, in, the, in the playoffs, but, like, this is the real deal of you're playing – Kirby Smart, whose program has been on an absolute roll the last three seasons. Yeah, and I think when you look at it, you know, last year, you know, Alabama got in the way of Georgia potentially three-peating, right? I think if Georgia gets into the playoffs, they more than likely beat Michigan. And, you know, you talked about it, Gordy, on the previous shows. You know, this isn't, you know, Sioux Falls or Washington. This is big boy football in the SEC, a big test for Kalen DeBoer. And I think it's going to come down to which quarterback do you trust a little bit more in this matchup, right? Is it going to be, you know, Carson Beck or is it going to be Jalen Milrow? And I just think Kirby Smart, he gets this team ready to go. They find a way to force Jalen Milrow to be a passer, and I trust Carson back a little bit more in that situation i think georgia covers and wins by more than two and two and a half in this game on the road to alabama jonathan if there's only if there was only an example of these two teams and these two quarterbacks ever playing before i would love god if there was only just one example of these guys ever suiting up and playing on the same field oh wait they did that last year and carson beck was the one that fumbled inside his 15 and bama ended up getting a win in a game they were underdog listen they've been an underdog the last three times they played georgia they've beaten them twice the only two losses that, that kirby has in the last two years or three years both to both to Bama. So I think this is I tell you what, I, I don't think that anybody from a rival fan base or from Georgia's fan base is ready to live in a world where they lose to Alabama again. That's all I'm gonna say. If, if, yeah, well, if that much, ends up playing out. Bro, there, there's also a big Saban. difference between well, last Saban. year though. Yeah, yeah. Saban. Saban was uh w- was a key point. Is it because they, they blew out Kentucky say. last year and they, they only beat him by one point this year? Is that the big difference? You know, my concern um in this game is that Kalen DeBoer will try and make Jalen Milroy into Mike Milroy into uh, Michael Penix. And if that happens, he could be a little bit troubled throwing the football. Now, if they just run the ball and they line up and they can have some success, success doing that, you can see where Alabama could be kind of a juggernaut in this game to where Georgia is in a little bit of trouble. Um, I just, I'm just worried that they might fall into that trap of trying to make him Michael Penix. And we saw the South Florida bulls. I mean, they, 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 bottled up Milrow for about what three quarters until yeah. the fourth quarter when the, the, the dam broke. Did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think a real key to this game, a real indicator for me guys is rushing yards. I think if I wake up Sunday morning, look at the team stats, it, Alabama's only path to winning this game is to outrush Georgia. 
Uh, that's where Alabama's at their best. It's not just Jam Miller. It's not just Justice Haynes. It's it's Jalen Milrow, too. And I think if you look at the rushing yards Sunday morning and Georgia outrushed Alabama, Georgia won this game. Uh, Alabama's only path is, uh, is winning that battle at the line of scrimmage and having those three guys all kind of go off. And uh, I kind of look for Jam Miller to have a, a pretty big game Saturday night. Yeah, getting Jimmy, if Georgia really help. Jimmy, if Georgia wins this game, I mean, how does the Alabama fan base react to this? That's a great question, Zach, because there hasn't been a lot of home loss. Obviously, the biggest home game last year is a loss to Texas. You know, that resulted in the quarterback being benched the following week. There, there was a reaction not just from the fans, but from the coaches as well. Uh, I, I think there will be a, a bit of a loud reaction, but there's also the reality of – Hey, you lost to Texas last year in kind of the same spot, still made it to a four-team playoff. So I think logically, uh, I don't think there would be a lot of uh, of leaping off buildings, but not everyone's logical in anyone's fan base. So I, I do suspect there, it will be loud in, in, in some. Hey, look, Alabama just hasn't lost a lot of these games and hasn't lost to Georgia much at all. I think Kirby's one in five you know, against uh, Alabama since he's been at Georgia. So uh, I think the fan base would handle it better than some think. But, yeah, there'll be, there'll be some noise. I, I think the one thing that people do genuinely forget about this matchup is that a year ago, I don't think anybody expected that Alabama team to beat Georgia. Like that Alabama team versus that Georgia team. And they go to Atlanta, and Bam was up by double digits for most of that game. And at the end of the fourth quarter, when you started seeing – when you start seeing Georgia come back, even I sat there watching and I was like, hey, this is like at some point you felt like the dam was going to break. Right. And what they did on offense and and what Nick Saban and and, um, and Tommy Reese did was they put the ball and the game in Jalen Milrow's hands and they and he went out and won it like with, with like design runs and wrinkles in the offense that you hadn't seen for 12 games leading up to that. And I think that that's a big thing that people don't give Jalen Milrow enough credit for. Quick show of hands. Who's take it? Look, you can change your opinion later in the week, but who's leaning Bama right now? Show of hands. So we got about four of us. Marler, Jonathan, and Brandon are leaning the Georgia Bulldogs. Oh, I, I, I feel like Marler just made the case for Alabama for like just, five listen, minutes. Let me do my thing. Let me emotionally hedge the way I want to emotionally hedge. Jimmy knows exactly who I am and what I'm talking about because it'll that is that is no, it's this is Marler's reverse rat poison. It's Marler's reverse rat poison. That's right. Saving's gone. Good for you, Marler. You try to pull a Pat McAfee on Lockdown SEC. I respect it. I respect yeah, it. I got you. Yourself. All right, we got we got a couple minutes left in this segment. We've we've done the uh, real football analytical talk. Now it's just time to make fun of Auburn and Oklahoma. I mean, what Great. is this, what is this game going to be, Zach? NC seventeen. Uh, yes. <laughs> recorded uh, recorded with the guys at Locked On Sooners earlier this week, and we decided like uh, I was nice and said, "Is it a race to twenty points?" And they they corrected me and said, "Hey, it may be a race to ten points." As far as who. <laughs> Who wins this one? And uh, to me, like statistically, Auburn's offense has been fine. They just turn it over like every five plays, it feels like. If they can fix the turnovers, which is a big if, uh, they'll win on Saturday. But that is a big, big if. And Oklahoma's defense has been pretty opportunistic when it comes to getting um, the football. I don't know if you know this, but part of being a a pretty good offense is not turning the ball. No question. No question. Brand rules. This yeah, here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Because if anybody knows anything about good cool. football, it's, it's a fine. Florida and New York Giants fan. Right there. Hey, nine out of ten times. I know what bad football looks like, and trust me, buddy, you're right in there. And well, I know, we're and in I know. It right now, no I'm question. Get the tags from your Discord. Just he's being mean to my team. Keep on crying, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I think what makes this game interesting, you know, on the Oklahoma side, is the benching of Jackson Arnold, and you bring in, you know, the true freshman, uh, Michael Hawkins. Right? How is he going to perform? in his first start in that environment in a road game at Auburn. I'm sure the crowd is going to be, you know, turned up, but I just can't, you know, bring myself. I'm not the smartest better, right? You know, that's why Vegas looks the way it does. But I just can't bring myself to bet on, you know, Peyton Thorne, you know, uh, or the, whatever the other quarterback's name is against a Brent Venables defense, bro. right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just He's I can't see network. how that's going to be an advantageous matchup for the Auburn Tigers. So, you know, yeah. I think Oklahoma and Michael Hawkins in his first start, I think they go in there and win the game. But, you know, hey, I mean, it's going to be a lot of silliness this weekend at Auburn. Exactly. Did Hank Brown. Too. Go ahead, Steven. Did Hank, Hank Brown, Brown. There you go. Hank, Hank Brown. Brown. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And Peyton Thorne get the bus off of him. <laughs> this is the game. Uh, I, I, the don't game. They, uh, I don't think they feel like um, that the, their coach threw him under the bus. Um, but – <laughs> 
That is certainly the narrative for sure. Do you sure. think that if they would have tried to throw him under the bus, it would have been intercepted? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think would have caught it, Marler, if they did try to throw the bus at free? It, it probably would have been the other team for sure. Did you know what's, what's amazing? And, and it's it's fun to give you a hard time, Zach, because you, like you kind of voice what a lot of Auburn fans did this offseason, which was looking at this, like all this preseason hope and hype, and it happens with every team, right? It's, it's the beauty mm-hmm. of the offseason being a champion of August. It, every single fan base has it. But looking at that schedule, I heard so many Auburn fans looking at it and being like, dude, we're going to be 4-0 going, like, going into that Oklahoma game. Well, Oklahoma they, they should have been. I mean, there's no SEC way we could have gone into that thinking, yeah, you're going to turn it over five times in the two games that matter in the first four. Like, there's just but, no but way I you also, can assume that going I into never, it. I never heard any Auburn fans break down any of those games thinking, this is the reason why outside of home field advantage, we're going to be 4-0 and potentially 5-0 after the Oklahoma game. And then you had to get on the field and actually play, you know, like what do I say, yeah. was, what do I always say Gordy? They got to – Tee up that ball at three thirty, and you got to line up and play somebody. Like that's where that's where they've been tough. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think the effort, especially on the offensive side of the football. I mean, they've just been outplayed against Cal mm-hmm. and against Arkansas. And then, I mean, I, I do think the roster is better. But to your point, like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You yeah. got to suit up and play. So, and you think um, it'll be Thorn? You think they'll go back to Thorn on Saturday? Yeah, I think it'll be Thorn on Saturday. I have to ask you a question, Zach, uh, because I didn't get to experience this as a fellow bad SEC program. Great. I, I um, love where this is going. <laughs> what, what was it like to score a lot of points in a win in week one this year? Well, that was fun. That was that was yeah. like straight euphoric. My Mine just got demolished right away. So, But also <laughs> seems like forever ago. I mean, there's just been so much pain since then. So much pain. <laughs> I like to think I'm stronger for it, but I don't know. I, don't I blame, know. I blame Zach for Cal Twitter. I do. I blame Zach for Cal Twitter. <laughs> yeah. They Auburn. take it over. What does that yeah. mean? Auburn gets it. I mean, Cal if, they, if, they, if, if Cal would not have beaten Auburn, they would not have became what they became. A yeah. top five storyline of college the football. Cal Twitter. Cal Twitter. Cal Twitter. Cal Twitter. Cal Twitter. Auburn Carter. is uh, very fortunate that this is a week where they can bounce back and win if they score like 12 points. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy, don't be nice to Auburn. We to don't accept your kindness, Jimmy. We don't <laughs> accept your kindness. It's, not, it's it's true. I mean, Auburn can have a big bounce back win and score like twelve points. And, and didn't Mississippi State game. Mississippi State beat Arkansas seven to three last year? So maybe this one is a, a repeat seven to three. Uh, one prediction on the way out, and Stephen will love this one. In twenty twenty five, Cam Coleman wearing an Ole Miss jersey. Coming Ooh. up next, we're going to dive deeper that into. Come from? <laughs> Into uh, Will Texas throttle Mississippi State? Who is on upset alert? The SEC squad is talking more ball coming up next. We'll get back to the squad in just a second, but want to remind you guys today's episode presented to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. And look, we love Prize Picks, it is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you will watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. And uh, prize picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy so that your lineup uh, stays in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, prize picks, your picks are still live uh of course they've got great uh stuff going on there right now with players and stat types uh all the different things you can look at highlight your winnings from um you know looking at all the different stats stat lines at prize picks and see what's working for you what's not and um right now you can go download the prize picks apps today and use our locked on college code that's going to get you 50 dollars instantly when you play five dollars that's code locked on college on price picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars you don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus it is guaranteed it is price picks run your game with price all right one more segment here on the sec squad and fellas we are looking at some of the other games this weekend and uh jonathan i know you kind of touched on it It sounds like it's gonna be arch but first sec game for texas we saw oklahoma's last week it didn't go so well but uh texas heavy favorite at home against the bulldogs who are just a mess right now yeah thankfully we're not playing you know tennessee or the number five team in the country but texas is the number one team in the country for a reason and i think you know 
the spread may sound crazy, 38 and a half, but my bold prediction is they're going to, you know, match it and, you know, beat them by, you know, 40 plus points. So, yeah, it's going to be rocking in, in DKR for sure. Um, you know, the first SEC matchup, like I said, thankfully we're not playing a team like Tennessee and it's Mississippi State that's reeling, you know, a team that lost to Toledo by 19 points. So, yeah, I expect Texas to, you know, continue to assert themselves as the number one team in the country and go out and win big for sure. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. Go off, I'm Brandon. Sorry. Go off. Who the f- do you think you are? The number one team in the country. I don't know. I don't think that the AP, that's what the AP thinks we are. The number one team in the country. Look, 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 look. The good thing is I can't wait for our crossover later in the season. Florida gets to see what it. What was the sass on Toledo? <laughs> what was the sass on Toledo, Jonathan? Don't talk about my school like that. Texas is my bad. I, I, my bad. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're more of a Toledo fan than a Florida fan at this point. Look, you know, it's Texas cool, right? Have that thirty-eight point cup. Thirty-eight points covered by halftime. Yeah, yeah. you it's can so- power rank the SEC however you want to, as long as Mississippi State is number sixteen. They- yeah, I agree with that, Stephen. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Anybody is going to fault that. I mean, yeah, yeah. Steven, give me a quick thought on on Kentucky because I, I feel like this is a Kentucky team that kind of got the train back on the track last week. The offense started to look a little bit good. They got Dane Key going finally. He's an awesome wide receiver. But, um, I mean, look, I know Ole Miss's defense has been pretty legit. I think they're like top five in just about every defensive category. But this will be a, a good test. I know Brock Vandergriff hasn't wowed yet. But if they – like this is, a, this is an exclamation point game for the Ole Miss defense, it feels like. Yeah, and, and Kentucky's defense, just to change the subject on you, like they, they're probably the second best defense that Ole Miss is going to play this whole season. I mean, they're legitimately good. Now, That's offensively, wild. the offensive line is not very good right now. That's the reason I think the Ole Miss defensive line is going to eat Walter Nolan, Prince Liam Mommy Ellen, J.J. Pegues, the Auburn transfer, um, and Santer and Perkins, all those guys, they're going to eat and they're going to make – Brock Vandergriff. He wasn't the miserable. only transfer you mentioned. Why didn't you do that for everybody? <laughs> no, uh, it's because we had the conversation earlier in the day, and it's like all the Auburn people needed to know that he's an Auburn transfer. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a situation. I've been this where, all day, and this is exactly why. No. <laughs> um, Ole Miss's defensive line is going to be the star in this game. I do think Ole Miss's defense is legitimately good. Walter Nolan is potentially an all SEC guy. Prince Liam Mommy Ellen, he's a first round NFL type guy. And those guys are going to eat. And whenever you have JJ Pegues as the number three option on that defensive line, the that's Auburn the transfer. Reason, yeah, the Auburn transfer. <laughs> that is the reason they are so good. And I don't think that Kentucky, if Ole Miss scores north of 24 points in this game, they're going to win the game fairly easily. When he was at Auburn, we would put him at tight end and then at quarterback. And we called (laughs) that that package the fat cat, which was incredible. I remember when these two teams played two years ago, Stephen, that was a close (laughs) game and Kentucky really blew it. I mean, they they lost 22 to 19, but. Will I Levis did. turned the ball over. I mean, I almost thought Will Levis went to Auburn for a minute. He was turning the ball over so much. But um, but it was a close what game two years on? ago. But this Ole Miss team looks very different than they did from yeah. two years ago. The, the difference is two years ago, Ole Miss didn't have a defense at all. They, they survived. They absorbed what the other team's offense was doing. This Ole Miss defense is violent. This defense is aggressive. It attacks. And it'll be nice to see what they look like, even against SEC athletes like Barry and Brown and Dane Key. That's really good players. Now, Brock Vandegrift, he's a former five-star, played at Georgia. So, you know he has some talent, but he hasn't done it at this level. And I think that's because that offensive line so far has been so bad. Because South Carolina, you know, Marler's gone. He could answer this question. Their defensive line completely ate against the um, Kentucky Wildcats to the point where they couldn't even throw the ball. Mm-hmm. The uh, the game we haven't touched on yet, guys, might actually be the most – one of the most entertaining in the SEC this week. It's three and one Arkansas against three and one Texas A and M, and it's in Dallas and Jerry's world. And I've been watching this line, and A and M has been hanging around a four point favorite. Guys, I, I mean, we talk about who's on upset alert this week. Is I'm feeling Arkansas right now. The way Bobby Petrino's calling plays with Taylor Green, I I think this is fa- advantage Arkansas. Marcel Reed's been okay for A and M, but they just barely beat Bowling Green. Yeah, my only thought on this game as a Cowboys fan, I'm just excited to see competitive football in AT&T Stadium because we haven't seen it the last two weeks from the Dallas Cowboys. So I'll let the rest of the SEC squad dissect this one. But, yeah, excited to see uh, two teams with a pulse, you know, hopefully play in that stadium (laughs) outside of the Dallas Cowboys who haven't had one the last two weeks. And Bobby Petrino dusting off that Lamar Jackson Louisville playbook for what he's calling at Arkansas. I mean, it's kind of fun to see. 
I mean, I, I think it's a little overrated because of the fact that like we gave them so many extra plays. Like it's not like they put up that many like yards. They just got a bunch of extra possessions. I don't think, I don't think what they did against Auburn should be the reason that you picked them to beat Texas A and M. Now, if you have an opinion on Texas A and M or whatever, I think that's a different story. But like, let's don't use what they've done in SEC play so far for you to make that case. That's just yeah. my opinion. A&M's got two, two quarterbacks better than, than Auburn had last weekend. I, I think A&M's going to actually score some points if they don't turn the ball over. I think A&M's going to outscore Arkansas in this game, but outscoring Arkansas might mean just getting to about 26. Yeah, some yeah. weird things happen in this game. Remember two years ago, yeah. K.J. Jefferson's going in with the football <laughs> over the top to take the lead. It gets punched out, and it's back the other way for points. And it's like, man, they Arkansas just – they've not been good in this – rivalry but it's a new coach at AM. it's a backup quarterback at AM. so certainly something to keep it on any other upsets guys you you like potentially this week um i like auburn to get a home win honestly okay hey there we go yeah i, <laughs> well, I, I, I genuinely I do it as a home dog um a bad offensive line and a true freshman quarterback is hey. not an avenue to win games in the sec which in-state alabama team is more likely to win on saturday auburn Definitely Alabama. I'm going Alabama. Sweet. Hey, you know what? Let me give you a sneaky one. I don't think they win, but South Alabama is at LSU, and we didn't even touch on that one. Yeah. South Alabama just scored 87 points against Northwestern State and then 48 against App State. LSU's defense is not great, last I checked. So maybe South Alabama hangs around. We'll see. LSU's going to have to score in the 30s to win this game, but they may score in the 50s. Yeah, it could look like the um, Ole Miss LSU game from a year ago, honestly, if we're going to be real about it. It could be up and it could be a ping pong game. Major Apple White, uh, the former UT quarterback, he's a Baton Rouge native, now the head coach of South Alabama going back to his hometown. So that there's a storyline there for you. All right, we're giving you a reason to watch all these games and maybe a reason not to watch Auburn, Oklahoma, and Zach's <laughs> Uh, pathetic quarterback room but hey maybe it'll get better this week there's always uh, a sun coming up on the horizon gentlemen it's been fun another edition of the sec squad we'll do it again next week and uh, maybe we'll have more auburn turnovers to talk about who knows this has been the sec squad uh follow subscribe to your favorite sec uh team and show we'll be covering your favorite teams every day throughout the season don't forget I'll have you covered with the entire SEC every day with Locked On SEC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day.